So we're called a Reimagine Tim. Um, two weeks ago now, very exciting event. You talked a lot at the event about the virtuous circle of Ocado Reimagined and the way Ocado works. Can you bring that to life a little bit, a little bit more? What do you mean by that virtuous circle? I think the first thing is we've, we've often, you know, taken what we made in our retail business historically, but basically we're very big innovators, we're big investors, and we have over the last few years increased the investment in our platform to not just keep it ahead of the competition, but to just massively drive it forwards. And that's what Ocado Reimagined was about. And what does it mean from, a, from an Ocado Group business perspective is really if we can enhance the platform in the way that we have so we can make it lower cost for us to produce, passing on some of those benefits to our clients, so lower cost for our clients to deploy, then you know, that's obviously a good thing. If at the same time we can make it not only cheaper but actually much cleverer so that what it can do for our clients and what they can then offer their customers is better, i.e. they can offer their customers, you know, 60 plus percent same day deliveries out of the bigger warehouses and maybe, you know, a third or something going out in the first one to three hours, matching kind of the best short lead time services coming out of supermarkets, but with all the economics that you could achieve from the big warehouses and from, you know, planned routes, right? So if we can do that, we create an opportunity for faster partner growth. They'll grow faster because they can serve more customers from the same buildings for more missions. And they'll grow faster because the capital they need to deploy to do it, to simpler buildings and things like that, is, uh, is less. And also to the extent that simpler buildings means existing buildings and the timeframes from starting to deploy or make those decisions to have a building to getting it live to ramping it up also shorten. Things like uh, on-grid robotic pick I mean you need to hire and train less people in the building when you open it to go from you know start to full capacity. So overall there really is this this kind of this virtuous circle virtuous cycle where you you know our increased investment allows our customers to have to invest less to be actually be able to do more and they'll grow faster and therefore they'll deploy more and therefore ultimately there's you know there's more for us to justify the investment and carry on with an increased investment. And so with you know, 10 partners already on the platform and hopefully more to come, you know, we really are benefiting from the scale, creating the investment opportunity, creating a product that's unmatched in the market. And, and we just think we're creating that, that, that um, virtuous position that, that nobody else can match. And as you describe that, Tim, it's, it's a package that must be ex extremely attractive to our partners, uh, our clients. Um, anyone, any responses from our clients so far the last couple of weeks? Sure. Look, I mean, everybody got to see our, our largest client, you know, because we gave them a sneak preview. So in, in, anyone that didn't get to see it in a card, I reimagined should go and watch it. But obviously we saw uh, Rodney, the, the CEO and chairman at Kroger, say, you know, groundbreaking, um, uh, uh, game changer. You know, these kind of emotions were, were the type of responses that he was giving about what this meant. And, 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 you know, moving on to the next phase of our partnership and accelerated growth and stuff like that. But... You know, I've had reactions from, from, from our other clients that are also, you know, re-inspired, really exciting, need to rethink about what this means and how we invest and how we grow together. And during the pandemic, new services came up, new offers to customers. And I think some of the things that, that it's clear, cl or, you know, much clearer for after we've announced Reimagine that our clients can do to be the best in class in every mission. Really positive reactions. A lot of people saying, you know, we want more information. You know, we want to understand how much cheaper, how much gets passed on to us. How do we, you know, what does this mean? How quickly can we get that software live? How quickly can we be using a big shed to, you know, do two hour deliveries? How many two hour deliveries can we do from a big shed in a one hour radius? You know, so really busy time for our teams because everybody, you know, it's really opened people's imagination as to what's possible and it answered so many long term questions. Even talking to prospects over the last, you know, six, six months or a year, people have had said, I'm, where's this all moving to in short lead time and, you know, queue commerce and range sizes and, you know, today for tomorrow and sheds. And I think this just really helps people to understand how do I build the lowest operating cost model, but deliver the best service in not just accuracy and pricing, but in accuracy and pricing and, and lead time. And so, 
big excited. So Tim, let's talk about our, our operating cost model. Um, the good news is that we're well on track with all the goals that we set ourselves. What has Ocado reimagined? We've heard a lot about the improvements that Ocado reimagined innovations are going to bring. What does this mean for us? What does it mean for our clients, more importantly? Look, it means there are significant benefits. So capital costs coming down in robots, capital costs coming down in grids as well as new things as well. We're gonna share those benefits with our clients. In fact, we're gonna be super generous in that sharing. Um, but the way I think about it is, is the way that my broadband provider has you know, treated me at home for the last 10 years or so. You know, every couple of years, they charge me a little bit more. That's like the inflationary increase in price, but they keep upping the ante on what I'm getting for it. So we're gonna take some of those savings from those cheaper robots and those cheaper grids that would be on our side and we could just take to profit and actually reinvest those in giving our clients things like Robotic Pick that drive significant cost enhancements for them that we know they will pass on to their end customers and therefore will grow the demand, grow their need to build sheds and, and, and the amount of sheds that, that they have and the, and the speed with which they scale them up. And we create a virtuous cycle for their customers, for our clients and for ourselves. And, and that's how we're looking at it. And you know, we're talking about site productivity up over 50% for our clients, which it means that they get you know, more than a 30% saving in, their, in, in the labor costs they put into those sites. W these are quite big numbers, and this is only the beginning, of course. Great, thanks, Tim. So we've heard a lot from our shareholders, from the market generally. They'd like to hear more about our key performance indicators for our solutions business and to, to be able to judge our performance. Um, we've shared two or three of these uh, today for the first time. Um, do you want to talk a little bit more about um, how we're measuring our own performance? Yeah, look, we, we, we want to make sure that you can understand, you know, what, what we're doing. And so we put some indicators out there to explain what's, you know, what we've managed to get live, you know, the kind of the scale of, of what's going on in the business, uh, and also the, the direction of travel in the really important cost lines as well, so people understand how we're, you know, ha, ha, what the progress is that we're making. Brilliant. Thanks, Stephen. We could talk about all this all day, but uh, we've only got a limited amount of time. Thanks, Tim. Really enjoyed it. Cheers.